This is the OTB Network. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We've had a very busy and exciting weekend and actually past week of stakes racing action with a lot of stakes racing from both Keeneland and Oaklawn. We're going to head to Kentucky first, where Keeneland consider, continues to have almost a stakes race every single day. We're going to go back to last Wednesday in the Vinery Madison Stakes, a grade three for older Philly and ma fillies and mares going short. Let's head to Keeneland and the Vinery Madison. And they're off. Revolutionary Act and Molto Vita have early speed. And Madcap Escapade is there to their outside. These three come to the front, onto the main track. Revolutionary Act gets over to the rail, leading it by a length. Madcap Escapade goes second by a length. Molto Vita third by two for the move up the back stretch. Bending Strings travels in the fourth position. Then my trusty cat and a gap of five more lengths to Josh's Madeline and Suri, who is last against the rail, nine lengths off the lead, 21 and two, the time for the first quarter. There goes Madcap Escapade, the favorite, up to get the lead and opens up by two lengths on Revolutionary Act, who's now second in the turn. Molto Vita is third toward the inside, now moves up between horses, and Bending Strings moves up along her outside. Just over a quarter mile to come, Madcap Escapade leads it by three and a half lengths. Molto Vita and Bending Strings, who's third on the outside. Revolutionary Act drops back. My trusty cat goes to fourth. The half, 43 and three over the muddy main track. And Madcap Escapade runs right by the eighth pole with a widening four-length lead to Molto Vita. My trusty cat, Suri, runs late toward the rail. Josh is Madeline down the center of the track. But Madcap Escapade will take the Vinery Madison in a splendid performance. Madcap Escapade wins at a multiple horse photo for place. The time, one minute 23 and one fifth seconds. Madcap Escapade making it a route, ending up winning by just under five lengths throttle down, but she probably could have won by plenty more. My trusty cat picking up the second spot. Molto Vita chasing in the early going and finishing third on a racetrack officially labeled muddy, but looked a little bit more like sloppy, in my opinion. The winner, Madcap Escapade, is a four-year-old bay daughter of Hennessy from Sassy Pants by Saratoga Six. She was bred in Kentucky by Needham Betts Thoroughbreds and James Blackburn, owned by Bruce Lunsford and trained by Frank Brothers. Ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey. Madcap Escapade covers the seven furlongs on the mud at Keeneland in 123 and 1. Heading right back to Keeneland now in the running of the stoner side Beaumont for three-year-old fillies. $250,000 available for the three-year-old fillies. Let's head back down to Keeneland and the stoner side Beaumont. <laughs> And they're off. Aspen Tree comes out for the lead, and Brooks Halo will come forward with her. Punch Appeal is there up on the far outside as the field heads onto the main track. Brooks Halo between horses has the advantage by a half length. Punch Appeal gets alongside the leader in second. Aspen Tree goes a close up third down toward the inside and is flanked by Hot Storm. Gap of five more lengths to end the gold, who trails through an opening quarter in 22 and 3 5 seconds. Brooks Halo leads it by a half length. Punch Appeal continues to shadow her all the way to the far turn. Hot Storm is third up on the outside, one length off the lead. Then Aspen Tree back toward the rail. Gap of two and a half more to end the gold, who starts to close that gap and catches the field with three furlongs remaining. Punch Appeal has taken over, and Brooks Halo is dropping all the way from the lead to last. Hot Storm and In the Gold are stacking up on the outside of Punch Appeal. Aspen Tree is looking for room, but it's In the Gold who has clear sailing on the outside. Aspen Tree looks for an open lane and finds it toward the inside. The half in 45 and 3 fifth seconds. Aspen Tree and In the Gold running by the eighth pole together. Six more lengths back to Hot Storm and Punch Appeal. In the Gold, a short lead from Aspen Tree, who's second, the stoner side, Beaumont. Goes to end the gold by a length. Aspen Tree was home second. Hot Storm was third. 
in the gold, rallies her way into the Kentucky Oaks with an off the pace running move on in the stoner side Beaumont for Nick Zito. Very impressive performance as the favorite over Aspen Tree with Hot Storm back in the third spot after a stumbling start. In the gold is a chestnut three-year-old daughter of Golden Missile from Incinerate by Groovy. Bred in Kentucky by Whitewood Stable Incorporated and owned by Live Oak Plantation, trained by Nick Zito and ridden to victory by Rafael Bejarano in the gold. Covers the about distance of seven furlongs at Keeneland in one minute, 26 flat. We're going to head back to Keeneland now onto the Keeneland Turf Course for Friday's running of the Grade 2 Makers Mark Mile. For older turfers running the flat mile, the return to the races at the age of four of Artie Schiller. Let's head down to Keeneland and the Makers Mark Mile. And they're off. Mr. Light, Artie Schiller, trade fair, then Gulch approval. These four come to the front. Good reward just settles along the inside from that inside starting spot back into the fifth position as they enter the first turn. Trade fair moves up outside of Artie Schiller. Mr. Light with an awkward move between horses third. Gulch approval now moves up from fourth to second, just a half length off the lead. Further back, B.A. Way is fifth on the outside. Good reward, sixth against the rail, joined there by Laura's Lucky Boy. Then Mook Bill, Salford City comes next. Cool Conductor is running absolutely last for the move up the back stretch. 23 and three, the time for the opening quarter. And Gulch Approval stays outward from the rail, leading at a half length. Trade Fair occupies the spot toward the inside. Mr. Light, B.A. Way in the center of the course. Artie Schiller is fifth against the rail, two and a half lengths off the lead. Good reward, then Salford City as they enter the far turn. Mook Bill comes next, then Laura's Lucky Boy, who's six lengths off the lead. Four more to Cool Conductor, the half in 47 seconds. Gulch approval with Artie Schiller moving up on the outside. Artie Schiller takes aim at Gulch approval. Good reward, looks for running room in tight toward the rail. Artie Schiller alongside Gulch approval. Good reward is next and Mr. Light. Trade fair is fifth against the rail. Final furlong of the makers, Mark Mile. Artie Schiller begins to draw clear of Gulch approval by a length and a half, then good reward, then Mr. Light. But it's all Artie Schiller. Artie Schiller by just over two legs back to Gulch approval and then good reward in Mr. Light. Artie Schiller picking up his first victory in his first try of the year. He had been very well groomed for this effort by the Jerkins clan and here gets the victory very impressively. Two and a quarter lengths over Gulch approval. Good reward not far back from that as there were several noses on the wire close right behind. But Artie Schiller very impressive kicking clear in the lane with his usual rather exuberant running style. Artie Schiller is a Bay four-year-old son of El Prado from Hidden Light by Majestic Light. He was bred in Kentucky by Iris Mesre. He is owned by Timber Bay Farm and trained by Jimmy Jerkins, ridden to victory by Edgar Prado. Artie Schiller covers the mile on the firm Keeneland Turf course in one minute 34 flat. Of course, a big day of racing on Saturday at Keeneland. It was bluegrass day. The stakes program kicking off with the Shaker Town for sprinters on the turf. Let's head down to Keeneland and the Shaker Town. And they're off. A very poor beginning for Mighty Bo, but not for Soaring Free. And Pomeroy, who immediately come out along with Chosen Chief. And Rezich is there on the outside as well to contest the early lead. Battle One moves up in the center of the course from fifth to fourth to third. Mighty Bo starts picking up positions against the rail. He broke last. He's now up within five lengths of the lead. Gap of three to Red Lightning. Heckle on the outside. Then Parker Run is next, running ten lengths off the lead. Delmar Show and Relaunch Star to complete the field. 21 and two for the opening quarter. Soaring free, leading Chosen Chief. Pomeroy is there. Rezich has dropped back. Battle One is still up close on the outside as they turn for home. Pomeroy, battle one from the center of the course, trying to track down Soaring Free. Chosen Chief is fourth, then Parker Run, Mighty Bow and Resich are coming late. Mighty Bow turning in a huge race today. Mighty Bow down the center of the course. This is amazing. Soaring Free is still there, then Chosen Chief, battle one in between horses. Mighty Bow, Soaring Free, Soaring Free hangs on by a neck from Mighty Bow, but what an effort from the runner-up. And then Parker Run in 102 and 1. 
soaring free, picking up his second victory in this race by a neck and a nice effort forwardly placed, as is his running style, just behind Chosen Chief in the opening quarter, but then took command nicely and held off Mighty Bow and Parker Run as both of them staged off the pace rallying moves. Parker Run at 86 to 1, taking advantage of the brisk curly pace in this spot. The winner soaring free is a six-year-old dark bay or brown gelded son of Smart Strike from Dancing with Wings by Danzig. Bred by the Samson Farm in Ontario, Canada and owned by the breeder, trained by Mark Frostad and ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey. One of the best old timers on the turf, particularly going short, soaring free. Covers the five and a half furlongs on the Keeneland turf in 102 and 1. We're going to move from the turf to the main track and remain with sprinters in the Commonwealth Breeders' Cup. This has become a fairly popular race. A lot of very nice East Coast sprinters showing up for this grade two $400,000 event. Let's head down to Keeneland and the running of the Commonwealth. And they're off. Gators and Bears broke alertly, Sir Shackleton right there, and Cajun Beat being hustled up on the outside. Silver Wagon joins that first flight onto the main track. Clock Stopper is away running next to last in a gap of some 10 more lengths to the defending champion, Lion Tamer, absolutely last for the run up the back stretch. Gators and Bears leads it by a neck. Cajun Beat goes second by two. Sir Shackleton third by three parts of a length. Clock Stopper is fourth on the outside. Silver Wagon stays toward the inside. The Gray, he's fifth. Now takes fourth, just over three lengths off the lead. And a margin of seven more lengths to Lion Tamer. Opening quarter went in 22 and one-fifth seconds. Gators and Bears leads it with three furlongs to come. Cajun Beat, the millionaire just off his flank. Clock Stopper is third on the far outside, still two lengths off the lead. Silver Wagon against the rail, joined by Sir Shackleton. And Sir Shackleton and Lion Tamer are gearing up. They're side by side, moving from the back of the field as they turn for home. Six horses in a line across the track to half in 44 and four fifth seconds. Clock Stopper tackles Gators and Bears at the eighth pole. Then Silver Wagon, Sir Shackleton and Lion Tamer are running out of time. Cajun Beat is last. It is Clock Stopper who's trying to get clear of Gators and Bears. Clock Stopper takes the Commonwealth Breeders' Cup by a length. Gators and Bears was second. Silver Wagon was third. The time, one minute, 22 seconds. Clockstopper, who has really been uh, kind of a hard luck horse, he is a stone cold closer, has been a stone cold closer. Of late, he is showing a little bit more early interest, and I think that this running running style change is suiting him quite nicely. Picking up his first victory in his last eight starts by three quarters of a length over the game, Gators and Bears. Long shot, 21 to one shot, Silver Wagon finishing in the third spot is Sir Shackleton. A little bit disappointing. He was up close right, or right there at the pace early in the inside, which is usually the place to be at Keeneland but was not able to go on with it, finishing fourth in the field of six. Also out of this race, it is worth noting that Cajun Beat, who pressed the pace outside of Gators and Bears, did end up giving way rather readily late in the running. He apparently suffered an injury to a hind leg during the running of this race and has been retired. The winner, Clockstopper, is a four-year-old chestnut gelding, a son of gilded time from great fun by Farm Away. Bred in Kentucky by Dr. Lance Bell and David Hochberg, owned by Overbrook Farm and trained by Dallas Stewart, ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey, who had a wonderful weekend this past weekend. Clockstopper covers the seven furlongs at Keeneland in one minute, 22 flat. Next up, the grade one Toyota Bluegrass for the three-year-olds, the final Kentucky prep, the final Keeneland prep for the real serious grade one type of horses in uh, in Kentucky Derby contention. Obviously, we've got the Coolmore Lexington, the single standalone race next week. But of the major preps, this is the biggest in Kentucky, $750,000, nine furlongs and a very solid field of seven. Let's head to Keeneland and the Toyota Bluegrass. They are at the post. And they're off for the Toyota Bluegrass Stakes. High limit and Spanish chestnut with Spanish chestnut outputting high limit as they go to the first turn. And closing argument in good position, settling over against the rail. Bandini caught out three wide, entering the first turn. Then Consolidator, Mr. Sword, who's next to last. And Sun King drops out to the back to trail. Some six lengths off the early leader. Opening quarter, 23 and 2 fifths seconds. Spanish Chestnut leads it by nearly two lengths onto the back stretch. High limit goes second by a length. Bandini third by two and a half. Then closing argument, joined by Consolidator, who's fifth on the outside. He's four lengths from the leader. Mr. Sword is next to last. 
and Sun King trails for the move up the back stretch, seven lengths from the front. The half in 46 and 3 fifths seconds, Spanish Chestnut setting the tempo, leading high limit by two. Another gap of nearly two to Bandini, who stays toward the outside. Closing argument still fourth, flanked by Consolidator, then Mr. Sword, and Sun King is last. Six lengths he has to make up on leader Spanish Chestnut as they enter the far turn. And here comes High Limit. High Limit inching forward alongside of Spanish Chestnut. Less than three furlongs remaining. Bandini has stayed outward from the rail throughout. He's third. He's two and a half lengths off the lead. Then closing argument, Consolidator, Sun King, and Mr. Sword. They turn for home. High Limit and Bandini stacking up to the outside of Spanish Chestnut. Closing argument is fourth. Then Consolidator, Sun King, and Mr. Sword at the eighth pole. Bandini shakes free of High Limit. And Bandini opens up by nearly three lengths. High Limit is second, a scramble for third. But the 81st edition of the Toyota Bluegrass is settled. Bandini takes it by just better than four lengths. High Limit was second, closing argument third. And then Sun King fourth in a time of one minute, 50 seconds. Bandini living up to expectations. This Colt finished a good second last time out in a very impressive performance behind High Fly in the Fountain of Youth. He skipped the Florida Derby. High Fly came back to have it his own way that afternoon in that event. But uh, Bandini, who was really getting to him late two races back for High Fly, looked tremendous on Saturday. He sat just off the early pace. We had Spanish Chestnut going out to the lead. High limit, trying something different, not breaking on top. He rated kindly and ran on well through the stretch, but Bandini sat the perfect trip and drew clear by six official lengths over high limit. Closing argument, who was just a notch behind Bandini in the early going, picked up the third spot. A little disappointing here was, uh, was Nick Zito's Sun King, who a lot of people had high hopes for. He finished fourth, Consolidator fifth in a very, very deep field here. I would imagine that just about all of these horses are probably still going to head into the Kentucky Derby. The winner, Bandini, is a Dark Bayer Brown three-year-old son of Fusaichi Pegasus from Divine Dixie by Dixieland Band. He was bred in Kentucky by Marvin Little Jr., James Islin, and Ron McKee, owned by Michael Tabor and Derek Smith, trained by Todd Fletcher, and ridden to victory by John Velasquez. Bandini covers the nine furlongs at Keeneland in one minute and 50 flat. We've got one more race from Keeneland. That on Sunday, the Jenny Wiley on the turf for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares. Let's head back down to Keeneland and the Jenny Wiley. And they're off. Sister Swank and Sister Star come forward side by side with River Bell third down toward the rail, then Intercontinental comes away running in the fourth position, followed by Cat Dog Gone, Delta Princess, and High Court who is last running seven lengths off the lead as they enter the first turn. Sister Swank on the outside, Sister Star against the rail. They continue their side-by-side -side journey up front. Intercontinental with an awkward run around the first turn, tossing her head. Now the jockey tries to get her to settle down and focus on business. Here comes Intercontinental. She's determined to move forward, and she will move up now to challenge for the lead. There's Intercontinental. She wants to go, and she takes the lead. As the jockey tries to throttle her down at the midpoint of the back stretch, she settles now comfortably against the rail. Intercontinental leads it by two. Sister Swank and Sister Star. River Bell between horses. Cat Dog gone on the outside. Then a margin of two more lengths back to the two trailers, High Court and Delta Princess. Opening quarter was 24 and three. The half in 49 seconds. And Intercontinental leads it by two and a half lengths midway on the far turn. Sister Swank is second by a neck. River Bell goes third by a length. Cat Dog gone is next. And then Sister Star, who drops out to the back of the pack, Delta Princess and High Court on her outside. Quarter mile to come, Intercontinental looking for her second straight. Jenny Wiley stakes, leads it by two. River Bell moves up the inside to challenge Sister Swank, then Cat Dog gone. All of that going on for second. Delta Princess runs late. Final furlong of the Jenny Wiley stakes. Intercontinental opens up by three lengths, then Delta Princess, Sister Swank, and River Bell. Intercontinental takes it. Delta Princess came from off the base to be second. Sister Swank was third. River Bell fourth in one minute, 41 and four-fifth seconds. 
Intercontinental, Jerry Bailey, another victory for Jerry, and another victory in this race, repeating, was Intercontinental, a very nice effort as the odds-on choice forwardly placed throughout and held off Delta Princess with her late rallying move, Sister Swank, who stalked the early pace early in, the, uh, in the first part of the race under Corey Lannery, held on well to finish third. The winner, Intercontinental, is a five-year-old bay daughter of Dane Hill from Hasili by Chaosi, bred in Great Britain by the Judmont Farm, owned by the breeder and trained by Bobby Frankel. Ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey, Intercontinental covers the mile and a sixteenth on the Keeneland Turf in 141 and 4. We're going to pause now for a brief message, and when we return, we'll be heading to Oaklawn Park in their Racing Festival of the South. Please stay tuned. NYBreads.com, the online home of North America's best incentive program. The latest news, updated throughout the day, plus streaming video of New York Bread Stakes winners. Check out the New York Bread leaderboards for jockeys, trainers, owners, and breeders. Want to become an owner or breeder? Well, the New York Thoroughbred Breeders section tells you about upcoming new owner seminars and farm tours. You'll even find an online sales section with horses you can purchase right now. There's a directory of New York State Farms, a stallion registry, plus up-to-date sales information complete with hip numbers and pedigree pages. Thinking of breeding your mare? First go to nybreds.com and run a hypothetical mating with any registered New York-based stallion. And finally at nybreds.com, you'll see why the New York Breeding and Racing Program is North America's best, with over $40 million a year in purses, incentives, and awards. So get with the program at nybreds.com. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now at Oaklawn Park in the Racing Festival of the South. Last Wednesday, they contested the fifth season Breeders' Cup for older horses. Let's head to Oaklawn and the fifth season. And they're off in the fifth season. Good break for all here. And in the middle of the track, there goes Mach 4 showing his speed. Clay's awesome. Wants to challenge him to the inside. Free thinking, staying right with the leaders. Miss B takes over fourth. Absent friend is fifth. At the rail, that's River Mountain Road in sixth. Followed by Pro Prado and Separado as they head on to the turn. Mach 4 establishes the lead. Free thinking in the middle of the track, running second. Clay's awesome. Has the rail third, two lengths off the leader. Miss Me is on the outside, fourth absent friend, staying at the rail fifth. It's another five lengths further back than to River Mountain Road, Pro Prado, and Separado. The opening quarter was raced in 23 and 2. Nice pace going on here for Mach 4, who leads it by a length, free thinking second. Miss Me ranges up to the outside now, third. Clay's Awesome is right there between horses, absent friend. It's still about seven lengths back to River Mountain Road, Pro Prado, and Separado. They continue down the backstretch in the fifth season through a half mile in 47 and 3. The leader is Mach 4. Free thinking, stalking that pace, Miss Me to the outside, Clay's Awesome looking for an opening at the rail. Absent Friend is tucked right in behind all those horses. It's another five lengths back then to River Mountain Road. They're on the final turn with Mach 4 leading it, now it's a half. Free thinking is still their second, Miss Me third, Clay's Awesome, Absent Friend all in striking position. And they get past the three quarters, one twelve and two. Here they come into the stretch of the fifth season stakes. Mach 4 leading the way, free thinking second. Middle of the track now trying to come on his absent friend. At the rail, Clay's Awesome. Mach 4 leads it. He's got it by a length down, opens it up a length and a half. Clay's Awesome at the rail, free thinking. Absent friend also right there. But Mach 4 opens the lead now to two. That is Clay's Awesome in second with a 16th to go. But Mach 4 is going to get that elusive win. He's going to take the fifth season by two and a half. Clay's Awesome finishing second. Absent friend was third. Mach 4, one of the uh, old hard-hitting Midwestern types, showing good early speed as is his usual forte and running on with it to beat Clay's Awesome by two and a half lengths. Absent friend gave chase through the drive but was able to settle for no better than third as the favorite. The winner, Mock Thor, is a five-year-old chestnut son of Boston Harbor for Moroccan Magic by Rahi. Bred in Kentucky by Gainesway Thoroughbreds and Highlands of Lexington. He is owned by R and W Surgery Partnership, trained by Jerry Cart, and ridden to victory by Jeffrey Burningham. Mock Four covers the mile in the 16th at Oaklawn in 142 and 4. Right back to Oaklawn now for Thursday's stakes feature, the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap, $100,000 for sprinters. Let's head back down to Oaklawn and the Count Fleet. And they're off in the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. And there goes Top Commander quickly away from the gate with Stablemate That Tet to the outside. Forest Grove is third. Then Rodeo's Castle rushes up at the rail. Two Don Automatic is fifth. It's another three lengths back to Old Rebel, followed by Level Playing Field and Engineered as they move down the back stretch. 
Top commander has the lead. That Ted is second. Rodeos Castles at the rail. Third, Forest Grove is fourth. Two down automatic right there in fifth. You get the opening quarter mile, 21 and four as they head for the turn. Top commander leading away just over a length. That Ted is second. Forest Grove ranges up alongside of Rodeos Castle. Third and fourth, two lengths back to two down automatic. Another three lengths back engineered is on the move. Alongside of him, old Rebel and level playing field. And here they come into the stretch of the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. Top commander leading the way. Forest Grove to the outside. Between them, that Ted is right there in third. Rodeo's Castle fourth. But Top Commander's got something left. He leads it a length and a half. Forest Grove second. That Ted is third. Two down automatic coming on fourth with a furlong to go. It's Top Commander. Forest Grove coming on. That Ted at the rail. Top Commander continuing on with it now. And Top Commander pulls away to a two-length lead. It's Top Commander at the wire in front. Forest Grove will run second. That Ted finishing third. Six furlongs a minute, eight and three-fifths seconds. Top commander, a nice effort here by a length and a half on the front end from Forest Grove, who was shipping in from out of town. That tat chasing the pace in the early going, running very well throughout the early part of the race, but did fade a little bit late. Favored in the field of five to two was Old Rebel. A little bit disappointing, finishing fifth in the field of eight. The winner, top commander, is a five-year-old Bay Gelding, a son of King Mambo from Mackenzie Slough by Seattle Slough. Bred in Kentucky by TAC Holdings and owned by Cortland Farm. Trained by Cole Norman and ridden to victory by Carlos Gonzalez. Despite his distance running turf pedigree, this guy ends up winning the six furlongs at Oaklawn Park in a brisk 108 and three. We're going to continue now at Oaklawn Park and the grade two fantasy for three-year-old fillies on Friday. Nice race, one of the highlight races for the three-year-olds on the card at Oaklawn Park. Let's head down to Oaklawn and the fantasy. And they're off in the fantasy. Breaking out for the lead was Rugula, and there she goes. Sharp Lisa chasing her, followed by Round Pond and Our Lady Joy. It's another length and a half back to Cape Hope. To her outside is Jill Robinell, the beater man trails as they move on to the turn. Rugula's got the lead by two. Sharp Lisa moves into second. Round Pond hanging right there inside of her. Middle of the track is Our Lady Joy. Cape Hope is at the rail. Another length and a half back to Jill Robidell and still the trailer of the beater man can. The opening quarter, 24 seconds. Rugula leading the way. Sharp Lisa stalking her under Garrett Gomez second. Round Pond staying right with him in third. It's two lengths further back then. In the middle of the track, Our Lady Joy is fourth. At the rail, Cape Hope is fifth. Then the beater man can moves up alongside of Jill Robinell. They get past the half mile in 47 and three with long shot Rugula still showing away. Sharp Lisa is second. At the rail round pond biding her time in third. Our Lady Joy is now moved up to fourth. Cape Hope is right there. The beater man can moving up. They move to the final turn. Rugula quickly opens up some distance now and round pond takes after her. Sharp Lisa is not going on with it yet, but she is still under a drive and on the outside there goes Our Lady Joy along with the beater man can. Three quarters, one, 12 and one. Here they come into the stretch of the fantasy. Round Pond takes command. To the inside, Rugal is second. On the outside, Our Lady Joy is third. Sharp Lisa drops back to fourth. But it is Round Pond and Stuart Elliott with the lead. Rugula hanging on second. Late move coming in the middle of the track. Sharp Lisa trying to come back on. 16th to go. Round Pond under a hand ride on her way to Kentucky with a big win in the fantasy by three and a half. Rugula holds on for second, and Our Lady Joy is third. Round Pond, the local filly, picking up the victory here. She was the second choice over shipper in Sharp Lisa, who was scratched from last week's uh, Ashland with a little bit of a foot problem. Round Pond has only been once defeated in a four race career, primarily at Oaklawn Park, and now goes on to grade two victory at that track, four and a half lengths. Over Regula, who she beat in the Honey Bee last time out, our Lady Joy shipping in from Florida to pick up the third spot. The winner, Round Pond, is a three year old bay daughter of Awesome Again from Gift of Dance by Trempolino. Bred in Kentucky by Trudy McCaffrey and John Toffin. Owned by the Fox Hill Farm, trained by John Service, and ridden to victory by Stu Elliott. Round Pond runs the mile and a 16th at Oaklawn in 143 and 2. Next up, of course, the big day of racing on Saturday at Oaklawn Park, kicking off with the Instant Racing Breeders' Cup. $75,000 ungraded stakes race at the mile and a 16th for three year old fillies. Let's head back to Oaklawn and the Instant Racing Breeders' Cup. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Instant Racing Breeders' Cup. Coda got away sharply, but now in the middle, there goes Tizzy Girl at the rail proper. 
Wildcat, and on the outside, Die Ball Dilly. After that's Mason Blue trailing one fit, they head for the turn. And it's the favorite, Tizzy Girl, gets the lead by half proper Wildcat up inside of her second. Die Ball Dilly's two lengths back in third, Coda settles into fourth, Mason Blue is inside of her fifth, and the trailer is one fit. Tizzy Girl, scampering clear, gets the opening quarter in 23 and two, and opens up three and a half. Proper Wildcat still running second. It's two lengths back to Die Ball Dilly, third, then a gap of about four Dakota. Inside of her is her stable mate, Mason Blue, and still trailing is one fit as they move down the back stretch. And they've got to go catch the four to five shot Tizzy Girl, who leads it by three and a half. Proper Wildcat still running second. Maze and Blue inching her way up now. Inside of Die Ball Dilly, third and fourth. Coda is still right there in fifth. They got the half in 47 and two as they move for the final turn. Tizzy Girl has the lead. Proper Wildcat now moving up. On the outside, Die Ball Dilly is still there in third. At the rail, it's Maze and Blue. Coda now trying to kick it into gear as they move on the final turn. Tizzy Girl has a short lead. Proper Wildcat second. Die Ball Dilly is third. Two lengths back, and Coda is on the move after three quarters in 112 and four. Here they come into the stretch of the Instant Racing Breeders' Cup, and it is still Tizzy Girl, proper Wildcat to the outside, Die Ball Dilly. Coda trying to move up now in fourth. Tizzy Girl has the lead on the outside, Die Ball Dilly. Between horses, it is still proper Wildcat, and Coda's looking for room. A furlong to go. The leader is Die Ball Dilly. Along the inside, proper Wildcat, Coda trying to come on by. Die Ball Dilly has the lead under Calvin Burrell. Down the inside, Mason Blue to the outside, Coda. Die Ball Dilly. Going to get there and win the Instant Racing Breeders' Cup by a length. Close for second and third between Maze and Blue and Coda. The running time, a minute 45 and four-fifths seconds. Debold Dilly, who is going to end up throwing a monkey wrench into a lot of people's premier pick for us, getting the victory at just under seven to one, sitting a stalking trip and passing Maze and Blue and Coda to pick up the victory as the odds on choice Tizzy Girl goes down to defeat after showing the, pay, showing the way in the early going. The winner, D. Bull Dilly, is a three-year-old daughter of theatrical from Kate's Dilemma by Tanks Prospect, bred in Kentucky by Nursery Place, Robert Manfuso and Clifford Grum. Owned by Janelle Grum and trained by Hal Wiggins, ridden the victory by Cal Burrell, D. Bull Dilly. Covers the mile in the 16th at Oaklawn in 145 and four. Next up, of course, the grade two Arkansas Derby, a million dollars of purse money, nine furlongs, final derby prep for the Oaklawn set. Let's head back down to Oaklawn and the running of the Arkansas Derby. They're in the gate, and they're off in the Arkansas Derby. A sharp break from Greater Good on the outside. Down toward the middle, there was Canteen getting away well. Joined out there by Flower Alley. At the rail, Batson Challenge of Fleet Alex is also right there. They come by the grandstand the first time, and with the lead, it's Canteen to his inside Batson Challenge. Middle of the track, Flower Alley is third. Andromeda's hero bursts his way through at the rail in fourth. A fleet Alex alongside his fifth. Greater Good staying out in the middle in sixth position, followed by Real Dandy. Down along the inside is Rush Bay. At the back of the pack, Wild Desert and Catshaker. The opening quarter mile, 23 seconds. Batson Challenge leads it a length. Under a stout hold, that is Canteen right there, second. The outside, Flower Alley running third. Andromeda's hero fourth, the Fleet Alex up to his outside. Greater Good is eight lengths off the lead in the middle. Followed out there by Real Dandy to the inside, Rush Bay. After that, Cat Shaker in Wild Desert, past a half in 47 and four. They're heading for the final turn now, the Arkansas Derby, and the leader is Batson Challenge. Canteen still second, Flower Alley third. Andromeda's hero has an opening at the rail. A fleet Alex is out there to the middle, moving up strongly. On the final turn, and moving up on the outside, there goes a fleet Alex. And it is a fleet Alex who rushes up quickly to the outside. Alongside of him is Canteen after three quarters, one, 12, and three. Here they come into the stretch of the 69th Arkansas Derby with a fleet Alex showing the way. Canteen has dropped back. Flower Alley is right there in third. A late charge trying to come on from the others, but a fleet Alex has kicked it in the gear. One of the most impressive Arkansas Derby wins ever. A fleet Alex blowing the field away. He'll win this one by a good eight lengths. Flower Alley will finish second. Andromeda's hero third. Real dandy fourth, the mile and an eighth in a minute, 48 and four fifth seconds. A fleet Alex, clearly whatever was bothering him last time out is over and done with as this guy 
kick clear at the top of the stretch to absolutely romp over a game Flower Alley, who was three quarters the length the better of Andromeda's hero at the wire. Real uh, dandy finishing in the fourth spot. It was a three horse blanket finish in the uh, second, third, and fourth places, but no doubt about the winner, a Fleet Alex, whose previous performance was very disappointing. It was apparent that he had something wrong. He did apparently have a lung infection that afternoon. Whatever he had, they have taken care of as a Fleet Alex rebounds with a vengeance here. As the favorite, interestingly enough, despite the, uh, despite the challenge from a number of pretty good horses here. A Fleet Alex is a three-year-old bay colt, a son of Northern Fleet from Maggie Hawk by Hawkster. He was bred in Florida by John Martin Silvertand. He is owned by Cash's King Stable. Trained by Tim Ritchie and ridden to victory once again by Jeremy Rose. A Fleet Alex covers the nine furlongs at Oaklawn Park in 148 and four. One more stakes race to bring to you from Oaklawn's Racing Festival of the South, the Northern Spur Breeders' Cup. Once again, this is for three-year-olds going the uh, mile and a 16th. Let's head back down to Oaklawn, the Northern Spur. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Northern Spur Breeders' Cup. Along the inside, Munificence kicks it into gear, drives out there for the lead, Jonesboro second. In the middle of the track, Prince T running third, exclusive is fourth. Copy my notes as the rail in fifth, Jazzy Gallop trails as they move on to the turn. Munificence takes command by two, Jonesboro in the middle second. Copy my notes slides up inside of Prince T third and fourth. Middle of the track is extra exclusive in Jazzy Gallop trails, the opening quarter 23 and one. Calvin Burrell has Munificence on the lead by three and a half. Jonesboro running second, copy my notes is right there third. Outside of him, moving up our Prince T end, extra exclusive in Jazzy Gallop is another five lengths back as they continue their run down the backstretch in the Northern Spur Breeders' Cup. Munificence leading in now, Jonesboro wants to put some pressure on after a half mile in 46 and four. It's two lengths further back to Prince T, extra exclusive, copy my notes at the rail. They head for the final turn. Munificence is still leading away. Jonesboro right there in second. Prince T is third, extra exclusive is next, then it's copy my notes. On the final turn of the Northern Spur Breeders' Cup, Jonesboro moves up alongside of Munificence, and it is Jonesboro who takes command after three quarters, 111 and two. Here they come into the stretch of the Northern Spur Breeders' Cup. Jonesboro takes command by a length, Munificence is second. Prince T in the middle is third, extra exclusive is fourth. But Jonesboro quickly opens up three and a half on this field. And under a drive, it is Jonesboro leading by three and a half. Prince T is second. On the outside, Jesse Gallup third, 16th to go. And Jonesboro is on his way. Jonesboro to win the Northern Spur Breeders' Cup by three lengths. Prince T finishing second. Jesse Gallup was third. A nice effort by Jonesboro in a three-length victory over Prince T. Jazzy Gallop, devoid of early speed and rallying well to finish third. Jonesboro under a typical Pat Valenzuela forwardly placed ride. Jonesboro is a three-year-old chestnut son of Cifapiano from Top Mare Mom's Command out of Top by Top Command. Bred in Kentucky by JFB Stable, owned by Michael Langford and trained by Randy Morse. Ridden to victory by Pat Valenzuela, Jonesboro runs the mile and a 16th in 143 and 4. We are going to pause now for one more brief message. When we return, we've got racing action from Maryland, California, and New York. Please stay tuned. This year, many thoroughbreds, no longer able to compete, will join the ranks of racing's homeless. The Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation and its supporters have been providing help and hope creating opportunities where once there were none. The TRF, together with the racing industry, is meeting the challenge, taking care of their own. With your help, we can continue our saving mission, ensuring many more horses the welcome home they so richly deserve. Why do I own and breed New York Reds? I mean, why not? Why go anywhere but New York? New York Reds have purses and incentives of almost $38 million a year. Trust me, it's not an easy game. It's all about common sense and finding an edge. Hey, as a native New Yorker, I've seen those ads you guys do for the New York Bread program. New York Breads, they start with an advantage. <laughs> I mean, come on, what more do you need to know? Get with the program. 
Welcome back everyone to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now with stakes racing action from Laurel. And on Saturday they ran the Priminetta for Philly Sprinters. Let's head to Laurel, the running of the Priminetta. And they're off. Fresh in and Forest Music. Forest Music flies out of there. It opens up a quick length and a half. In the second is Heavenly Bound in the second spot. Leaving on a jet plane is there along with Smartly away both in the yellow colors and French in at a settle back there in the fifth spot. Wallop racing six ball to Mera. His seventh and spirited game in Jelly is the last runner as they push along for the far turn. Forest Music scampering along at a rock solid pace out there. Length and a half in front. Smartly away is just holding down second. Heavenly Bound is in the third position in French Jeanette on the outside now taking fourth from leaving on a jet plane is in fifth. Spirited Game is down at the fence trying to push through and Spirited Game gets a good run seven lengths on the front. Wallop third to last and Jelly and last of all is Baldomera. They're at the top of the stretch and Forest Musical went the opening quarter in 23 flat swings for home. And that Forest Music just rolling through the Laurel stretch opening up impressively here at the 316. Spirited Game is coming to second. French Jeanette is in third with a furlong to run. Very, very classy filly, Forest Music. And she's just in a romp this afternoon. 16th of a left to come and seven lengths in front. Spirited game. And here comes Jelly picking up the pieces late. Forest Music. Tons the best here. Spirited game and Jelly in a blanket for fourth. Forest Music, a very nice effort by this filly on the front end. She, of course, is uh, a horse that was known as a very, very fast two-year-old, had some setbacks, but when she is right, she is very good here, romping by eight-plus lengths, part of an entry that was favored at odds on. She got the victory over Spirited Game with Jelly rallying from well off the pace to finish in the third spot after a slow start. The winner, Forest Music, a gray or roan four-year-old daughter of Unbridled Song from Defer West by Gone West, was bred in Kentucky by Twin Hopes Farm, owned by Michael Gill and trained by Mark Schumann, ridden to victory by Roberto Alvarado, Jr. Forest Music covers the six furlongs in 110 and 2. We're going to head out to California now and begin our stakes program on Saturday at Santa Anita with the running of the La Puente Stakes, $100,000 for three-year-olds on turf. Let's head to California and the running of the La Puente. Where they go. Goodwill Ambassador off just a little slow. On the inside, Chameau in as fast into stride. Eastern Sand going up alongside of that. A close up third is Cat Cold Eye. Chinese Dragon has the white blinkers now going to come towards the outside with Goodwill Ambassador at the back. Only five lengths would cover them all. Past the Sands first time round, Shamoan on the inside, and Eastern Sand is right there second. Catacold Eye is in third. Chinese Dragon might get caught a little wide into this turn now. There's absolutely no pace on up front, and Goodwill Ambassador is trailing. No more than five lengths would cover them all, though. They go to the three-quarter pole. Shamoan just got his ears cocked. He's almost cantering out here. They couldn't be going any slower. Eastern Sand a length back second. Catacold Eye in the red cap third. On the outside is Chinese Dragon. Only two lengths off these leaders and Goodwill Ambassadors at the back. Five runners tightly grouped as they make their way down the back straight. It's still Chameau and showing the way, but now here comes Eastern Sand to put a little bit of pressure on him, and they quicken a bit as they go to the half mile. Cat, a cold eye, is still in the third position. Chinese Dragon is fourth, now four lengths off the leaders, and inside of him is Goodwill Ambassador. Into the far turn they go. It's still Shamoan kicking on for home now. In the second spot is Eastern Sand. Cat, a cold eye, is still two and a half off them. And let's see, Chinese copy in the white blinker starts to come after them now. Goodwill Ambassador, six off them. Coming to the top of the lane, Shamo and a length and a half. In the second spot is Eastern Sand. Chinese Dragon now is going to hook to the outside and come with his run. Shamo and Eastern Sand. Chinese Dragon now getting going down the center of the track. And Chinese Dragon now coming flying. Eastern Sand, Shamo and try to go with him. But Chinese Dragon going to be too good. Chinese Dragon impressive again in the La Puente. Eastern Sand second, then Shamo and Goodwill Ambassador. And Catacold Eye was last. Chinese Dragon, this guy has developed into a very nice three-year-old turfer with a couple of very impressive performances of late. Here getting the victory by a length over Eastern Sand, who had his nose down on the wire just in front of Shamoan, who had to settle for the third spot in here. But Chinese Dragon, the clear victor, as the odds-on choice. Chinese Dragon is a bay three-year-old son of Stravinsky from Fabulous Fairy by Aladar, bred in Kentucky by Ben Sangster, owned by Michael Carter. Robert and Richard Hale and the Ron Kelly Family Trust, trained by Robert Hess Jr. and ridden to victory by Kentis Ormel. 
Chinese Dragon runs the mile and an eighth on the turf course at Santa Anita, one minute, 48 seconds flat. We're going to really stretch out on the turf now at Santa Anita in the running of the Grade 2 San Juan Capistrano, $250,000 true marathon on the turf, mile and three quarters. Let's head back to California, Trevor's call of the San Juan Capistrano. Feel for the San Juan Capistrano sent on their way. They all appear to come out very smoothly. All the boys, as expected, is going up to lead them, but as company from line out, and those two go to the front early. TH Approval gets up to race in third with Gene De Campeo in the goal down at the rail. Fitz Flag is in fifth, and Special Matters six, six lengths off these leaders. And at the back is Stanley Park and exterior. The pace good for this distance as they come down the hill now and line out is going on to lead them. Goes about three lengths in front now. All the boys contend to track in second today. Then it's TH approval. Jean de Campeo is in the four spot, giving them seven lane start. Special Matter is racing alongside a Fitz flag. They towards the rear. Stanley Park and exterior being held up at the back. They're a good 15 off this leader. Coming to the top of the stretch first time round. Now in the long shot, line out still clear by four lengths. All the boys tracking in the second spot. All line out wins a little wide into the turn here. TH approval is in third, and Jean de Campio on the inside is special matter. Fitz Flag is now back third last, and it's still Stanley Park and exterior the last two. Taken closer order as they come through the stretch now. Line out has slowed right down, is only just in front. In the center, TH approval. All the boys racing between them. Special matter on the outside is fourth, and Jean de Campeo in fifth. They followed by Fitz Flag. Stanley Park just loping along second last to six off them. And exterior quite content to trail by two. Almost half the journey covered now in the San Juan, and all the boys now goes on with it. All the boys, the new leader. TH approval is second. Line out has dropped back into the third spot. Special matter is fourth, and Jean de Campeo scrapes the paint just four and a half off the leaders. Two more to Fitz Flag, and still at the back we have Stanley Park and Exterior. They've been patiently ridden at the back now. They're eight lengths off the leaders. They're moving past the 5 8 pole, and all the boys now kicks on for home. On the outside, TH Approval. Those two sneak away now. Past the half mile they go, and all the boys and TH Approval open up five. Jean de Campio trying to come after them with line out. Now Stanley Park is starting to unwind. And Stanley Park from fifth. He's got seven to make up, but closing in. Then Fitz Flag, special matter. And Exterior is now winding up from last as well. as 11 to make up. They come to the top of the lane in the San Juan. All the boys, TH approval. Stanley Park is closing ominously from third. Then Fitz Flag exterior still far back. They come for home, TH approval. The one to catch, Stanley Park plugging away. Fitz Flag in the center, exterior running on late with Jean de Campio, but TH approval clear. Here's exterior absolutely flying late now. And Fitz Flag in there as well, but TH approval to win it. TH approval wins the San Juan from exterior. Fitz Flag and Stanley Park was fourth. TH approval getting the victory here. A nice effort by this guy who sat just off the early pace and how important it is to have good speed when you're going long, especially on the turf. Here showing the way home by a length and a half over exterior who was the favorite in the field uh, despite the fact that he had uh, very, uh, very unavailable form. A lot of the horses in here had already gone distances of ground quite consistently. This one in here for Bobby Frankel taking all the money. Fitz Flag picking up the third spot at 37. Seven to one. The winner, TH Approval, is a gray or roan four-year-old son of with approval from Potrical by Potriazzo, bred in Kentucky by Tadahiro Hotehama, owned by the breeder, trained by Eduardo Inda, and ridden to victory by Rene Douglas. TH Approval covers the mile and three quarters on the firm turf in two minutes, 45 seconds flat. We're going to head right back to the Santa Anita turf for Sunday's running of the Santa Barbara Handicap, a grade two for older filly and mares on the turf. Let's head back to California, the Santa Barbara. Deal for the Santa Barbara sent on their way. Midwife determined on getting the early lead and sprints away early. Ho Buzzard going to cross over onto the rail in the second spot. Just in behind that, we have Nadezba. Up alongside of her comes Moscow burning. Then it's Ask for the Moon. Urabe is back second last, and the favorite megahertz contend to trail early. 
through the stands first time round and midwife goes clear now midwife has opened up a four length advantage ho buzzard is racing along in the second position just in behind ho buzzard we have moscow burning and nadesda racing together a joint third then we come back to ask for the moon urabe is a good 11 off the leaders and a big gap is six back to megahertz they run to the three-quarter pole, and Midwife determined to get far clear now, and does just that. Midwife has opened up seven as they go past the three-quarter pole. Back in second is Ho Buzzard. On the outside of that, Nadezda. On the inside comes Moscow, burning in the black colors. Then a gap of three lengths further back to Ask for the Moon. You rave is up alongside of that, ten lengths off these leaders, and it's now five back to Megahertz. Strung out over a lot of ground as they go to the half mile. And Midwife is still clear by seven lengths, but they're starting to come after her now. Ho Buzzard is cutting into that lead. And on the outside, Nadezda, they closing in on that leader stride for stride. Then back to Moscow, burning, ass for the moon, you rave. And Megahertz is last, now 12 off the lead. Three eights to go, and the whole picture changes now as Nadezda now strikes the front from Ho Buzzard. Midwife drops back rapidly. On the outside, Moscow burning and let's see megahertz is winding up now and here comes megahertz she's got the blue cap she's got some running to do but she's determined and here comes megahertz down the center of the track now nadezka is going to try to keep her off but just look at little megahertz no size but a heart as big as the track and megahertz another awesome performance in the santa barbara she beats a very game nadezda behind that was ho buzzer then came uray moscow burning midwife and asked for the moon finish last megahertz makes it three in a row in this race with an odds on victory in her usual way off the pace rallying style she always likes to close with a rush in many cases she gets there and she has been a rather underrated mare for quite some time here getting the three-quarter length victory over nadezhda with ho buzzard back in the third spot after chasing the early pace the winner megahertz is a six-year-old chestnut mare a daughter of pivotal from heavenly ray by rahi she was bred by the Chevley Park Stud in Great Britain, owned by Michael Bello and trained by Bobby Frankel, ridden to victory by Alex Solis. Megahertz runs the mile and a quarter of the Santa Barbara in 159 and three. We're gonna head east now for the one stakes race run at the Big A this weekend, the running of the Comley for three-year-old fillies at the Big A on Saturday. Let's head down to New York, the running of the Comley. And they're off. Quite a ruckus and last toots who's looking for the lead. Quite a ruckus, last toots, vie for the lead with Bright Mahogany out on the far outside from third. And there goes Seeking the Annie to join the early leaders fourth and told taker is fifth early on. AC Ducey is rating back in sixth. Two and a half lengths back to Secrets Galore. Pleasant Chimes was off last in the field of eight. Down the back stretch run, quite a ruckus vying with last toots for the lead. The opening quarter in 23 seconds flat, seeking the ante is third, Bright Mahogany in the clear fourth. On the inside, told taker fifth, AC Ducey is still sixth, about five lengths from the lead, followed by Pleasant Chimes, and Secret Galore has dropped five lengths behind the rest of the field. Heading for the far turn after a half in 46 seconds flat. Last Toots and Quadaruck is still head-to-head, -head seeking the Annie, coming on after that lead now. Bright Mahogany giving a bit more rain, and she's now asked for a bit more run on the outside. And then it's AC Ducey, followed by Pleasant Chimes. Secrets Galore is now beginning to hit her best stride. The trailer's now toll taker, and the field turns for home. Last Toots, Quadaruckus, seeking the Annie. Room at the inside for Pleasant Chimes. No room yet for AC Ducey. And now Diane Nelson switches her to the outside. Seeking the Annie is taking the lead. AC Ducey putting in a final run on the outside. Pleasant Chimes down toward the rail. Seeking the Annie, trying to hold off the oncoming AC Ducey, who comes on to win. AC Ducey got there. Seeking the Annie was second, and Pleasant Chimes was third.
AC Ducey, who had looked to be a pretty nice aqueduct in her track horse over the wintertime, really came to hand nicely. This New York bred takes on grade two company here, albeit a somewhat light field at grade two, and picks up the victory by a half a length over long shots seeking the ante. Pleasant Chimes picking up the third spite with an off the pace rallying move after a stumbling start to get her day going. She did not break really well, but she did rally nicely as the favorite. The winner, however, very impressive. A.C. Ducey is a three-year-old bay daughter of a bag and one from Misty Mountains by El Nasser, bred right here in New York by the Glen Gray Farm, owned by Jeffrey Tucker, trained by John Morrison, and ridden to victory by Diane Nelson. A.C. Ducey runs the mile of the Comely at the Big A in 135-4. and four. That's going to wrap up a very busy edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope you'll be able to join us next week as we take a look at exciting stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.